First question here on the front on one. Coach uh, Davide Chinellato, Gazzetta Italy. How much of what did you do in game four do you think you can replicate in game five? I could hear you, I'm sorry. Um, how much of what you do to win game four do you think you can replicate in game five? Um, just our, our physicality. I thought we brought a physicality to the game. I thought our defensive mindset was really good. And I thought offensively, we really played with a pace. We shared the basketball. We moved bodies. And um, it was very effective for us. So we got to have a carry over to game five. Thanks. Chris on the left side. Ty, Chris Fedor, Cleveland.com. The Kyrie from games one and two and the Kyrie from games three and four. What's the biggest difference that you've seen from him? I think playing with more pace offensively, um, pushing the basketball on misses or makes. He's pushing it and uh, trying to create advantage there. I think um, with the switches, he's attacking early, um, not messing around with it too much, just attacking early. And we already know he's one of the best one-on-one -on -one players in the game. So um, when he's attacking early, we're moving bodies on the weak side. They can't load up to him. Are you are you using him differently offensively, or has that been something that he's chosen to yeah, do? Yeah, we have. We've been playing him off the ball, letting him move, come off pin downs, and you know, trying to cause confusion, make Clay work that way instead of, you know, Clay's a great defender, so being 6'7 and locking into his body, being physical makes it tougher. So trying to move Kyrie off the ball a little bit, let him come off pin downs and screens and give him a different look. Tim, over here on the right. Hey, Ty. Uh, Tim Bottas from the Washington Post. What uh, It seemed like early in the game, last game, Tristan immediately got into the game, had a lot of energy early, gave you got a bunch of rebounds. Um, and I know you guys made a lot of shots. It seemed like that really set the tone for the physicality you're talking about. What, what if anything, allowed him to kind of get going in a way he couldn't prior to that? I think um, offensively. I think, you know, moving bodies and moving the basketball and making cuts, you know, allows Tristan to roam free because they got to help and try to get back and by that time it's too late so I thought offensively just moving without the ball um, making the extra pass ball movement that allowed Tristan to get free and get to the glass a little bit for us. Carl here on the right. Stuart Barry a news group. Uh, Ty one of the many things you did well in game four you limited Steph Curry to 13 shots and you only made four. I mean it was said was there conscious adjustments made to uh, against Curry, or did you guys just do a little better job well, defending him? We had the same mindset going into game three of just, you know, being aggressive, you know, trying to take the ball out of his hands. But I thought the most important thing is transition defense. I think holding him to only 14 points in transition was big for us. And um, that's where Steph thrives in transition because he could shoot the ball from anywhere. So I thought getting back, you know, in transition defensively really helped us out. And then in the half court, we did a good job of just staying physical, staying on his body, and trying to trap him when we had a chance. Yeah, I was going to follow up with that. It seemed like you double team him a lot when he didn't have the ball, particularly coming off screens. I mean, uh, what, is, what is the theory there that you don't want him to get to certain spots? Or <laughs> Well, I mean, he's, he's dangerous, so we just wanted to, you know, limit his shots, take the ball out of his hands, and... Um, we did a good job of that in game four. We, just, we got to try to do it again in game five. Thank you. Michael up front. Ty, Michael Grange from Sportsnet in Toronto. Uh, on that same idea, has Steph looked like a different player to you in the first three games of the series, game four aside, compared to what he, he did last year in the finals? He, he struggled certainly in the last no, I three mean, or four games. I mean, he's always been a great player, but, you know, our mindset in, in the finals um, the first year and last year, the second year, we just try to take it out of his hands and, you know, make someone else beat you. And he's just so dangerous because he's a great passer. He's a great shooter. I mean, he can get to the basket. So um, just try to limit to his looks is um, important for us. And, um, you know, that's, that's always been our mindset. Every time we played him in the finals, just try to limit to his touches, limit to his shots, and um, make someone else do something. Does, does he look more energized, a little healthier, I guess, this year than last? Did you notice that last year? That I mean, he's dangerous no matter what. <laughs> so, I mean, not a really a big difference. When he's open, he's going to make shots. And uh, when he's playing free and you don't bring a physicality, he's able to roam and do whatever he wants offensively. Um, he's, one of the, he's one of the most dangerous guys in our league. Thank you. Gary, third row left. Todd Gary Washington, Boston Globe. There's a lot of talking going on in this series, conversations, trash talk. Do you tell your guys not to talk, to talk more? Do you let them be them in terms of their conversations on the court? And what have you thought about the kind of the interaction in this series? Um, me personally, I liked it. You know, I thought the first two games we were being too nice. The first three games, helping guys up off the floor, smiling, talking to guys. And, yeah, I didn't like that. So I'll take game four over anything else. So, you know, talking trash, being physical, whatever you got to do to try to get that edge to win, you got to do it. 
did, did on, on, a, on the play that Kevin Durant got hit in the head by Kevin Love, did Durant say something to you? Was there a conversation between you and him? To me after that? Yeah. No. Okay. Over here on the aisle? Yeah, Hector Torres, La Garata, Puerto Rico. You had an historic performance in game four as a team. You feel that in order to win game five, you need some kind of uh, historic performance too? Yeah, we got to play well. I mean, you're playing against a great team. We know you got to play great, you know, every single night. And both teams in the finals, they both feel the same way. So um, we got to come back with that defensive mindset, with the physicality that we had, and just playing with patience, sharing the basketball. And I think if... You know, we can kind of duplicate that same thing we did in game four, and we got a good chance to win game five. Brian, on the left side. Ty, you said you thought maybe there was just too much, too was too nice the first three games. Did you make that up a point to the guys going into game four? Yeah, like bringing the physicality, being physical. Um, our mindset, you know, has to be, you know, winning games. And, um, you know, not smiling back and forth or, you know, talking and playing. I mean, they're, they're coming after us, so we got to go after them. And, um you know, I don't see anything funny or anything to smile about, you know. So, you know, hitting and being physical and just saying that they did to us in the first three games, we got to do that. And um, last game in game four, I thought that's who we are. We got to be physical. If it's talking trash or, you know, knocking guys on the floor, whatever you got to do, we got to do it. We got to be physical. Any other questions for Coach? Thank you.